We're going to continue on this morning in our sermon series, Journey. Journey with all your heart. The battle is on. Journey with all your heart. The battle is on. So let's take a moment this morning, spiritually speaking, and let's really be honest about the condition of our heart. Okay? I want you, if you would, with me to... Take your arm and take your fingers as if you were trying to find a pulse. Would everybody please do that? Okay. We're going to do this in a spiritual manner this morning to see how our heart's doing. Mark 12, 30 says, To love the Lord your God with all your heart. How's your pulse? Psalm 86, 11 says, Give me an undivided heart, O God. Give me an undivided heart, O God. How's your pulse? Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Will you pray with me? Father God, make us authentic. Help us to be real on the inside. Please, in Jesus' name, Amen. Matthew 5, 8. Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Right on the inside. Last week, maybe it was two weeks ago now, I spoke at a seniors convention at Little Galilee. And I used this scripture, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And as an illustration, I use one of our elders, Dale Edwards. <coughs> Dale Edwards is legally blind. And when I talk to other men in the ministry who are my friends, and I mention Dale, and I mention that he is an elder, and I mention that he is legally blind, their first statement is, How can a man who is legally blind be an elder? And I tell him, oh, you don't know Dale Edwards. He doesn't see with his eyes, but he sees with his heart. Amen. He sees with his heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Be honest with yourself this morning. <coughs> Be honest with your God. How's your pulse? <coughs> How are you on the inside? For real. Pure. Pure means unmixed, unadulterated, pure in heart, not polluted with sin. Pure in heart, not polluted with sin. Somebody who is pure in heart doesn't teach their children and their grandchildren about sexual purity and then when their children and their grandchildren go to bed, they get on the computer and go to pornography sites. Or they're not involved in a sexual, immoral relationship. The pure in heart just doesn't do that. The pure in heart doesn't come to church and pray and sing and worship and be involved and then leave and then all week use vulgar language and it doesn't bother them a bit. The pure in heart, they don't do that. The pure in heart doesn't listen to somebody's prayer needs and prayer concerns and turn it in to the gossip of the church. The pure in heart, they don't do that. God, make us right on the inside. Max Lucado writes his story in his book, The Applause of Heaven, and I want to share part of it with you. Max Lucado writes, he had left for vacation for a week, and before he left, he had accidentally unplugged the freezer. When he came home and he opened up the freezer, you can imagine the smell, okay? The smell and the stench that was inside the freezer. So he writes, do you know what I did? I got a rag, I got a bucket, I got some water, I got some, some polish, and I scrubbed the outside of the freezer. And wow, did the outside of the freezer look good. 
But when I opened up the freezer, the inside, shoo, it still stunk. There still was a stench. So what he decided to do to help the inside of the freezer, he writes, I threw a freezer party. I invited all the high dollar appliances from the neighborhood to improve the freezer's social status. Surely that will help. He opened up the freezer and it still stunk on the inside, he said. So he decided to give his freezer a little class. So he put a Mercedes Benz bumper sticker on the front of the freezer. So he taped a high dollar cell phone to the side of the freezer. He sprayed the outside of the freezer with high dollar Usher cologne. Yeah, thought that would surely get the freezer okay. But he opened it up. Woo! And the freezer was still stinking on the inside. So he bought the freezer a copy of Play Freezer magazine. <laughs> he rented some movies about foxy appliances. And after a few days of high voltage pleasure, surely that would be the answer. But that didn't work either. The freezer still stunk, still had a stench on the end. How do we get a pure heart? Oh God! Oh God! That's who we turn to. We really turn to God. Create in me a pure heart. Oh God! Amen? Amen. Amen. Go with me to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Verses 8 and 9. Verses 8 and 9. But these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. They worship me in vain. Listen, check your pulse this morning. Let's be honest, if your relationship is just running your mouth, if your worship is in vain, I pray to God that it bothers you this morning. I pray to God that you are convicted. I pray to God that you're asking God right now, give me a pure heart for real. You know, you guys hear about them a lot. And I know I talk about them a lot. But I can't help it. I love them a lot, and I miss them a lot, my little girls. And they just taught me so much when I got to be with them. And one thing Shelby and Butter taught me when they were little, they were so pure in heart when it came to God. And I pray, I pray every day they haven't lost that. But I can remember driving in that little red truck. We had a little red S10, okay? And we'd be driving around. This one I was in good shape, sound mind, sound body, right with God, okay? And we'd ride around in that little truck, you know, and we'd have the, the radio up with Christian music, and I'd have the windshield wipers going, you know, helping us worship. <laughs> and the girls, they would, they, would, they would just laugh and laugh and laugh. But you know what? Every time, I'm not kidding you, every time, though, we'd meet an ambulance, and an ambulance would go by. And the first thing Shelby and Butter would say, Daddy, you think they're all right? Second thing they'd say, Daddy, do you think they knew Jesus? Third thing they'd say, Daddy, we better pray. And then Shelby would say, But Daddy, don't close your eyes, you're driving. <laughs> the pure in heart shall see God. We really love God and we really love God people and it's not an act and it's not an act it's not a facade I want to be pure in heart do you want to be pure in heart create in me a pure heart oh God Matthew 23 verses 5 and 7 
Matthew 23. Verses 5 and 7. Verse 5. Everything they do is done for men to see. Wow. Everything they do is done for men to see. Everything they do. I'm going to be honest with you. I played high school basketball. You guys know that. I played high school basketball for the Rising Sunshiners. And you know what? When we had practice, I played hard. I'm not going to get you wrong. In practice, I played hard. But you know what? It was nothing compared to how I, hard I played on Friday and Saturday nights. Game night. Game night. I'm going to be honest. You know why I played harder? The crowd. I loved playing in front of people. I did. And I loved the roar of the crowd. Okay, I'm 16 years old. I don't think that's so bad that a kid likes to play basketball on Friday and Saturday night and he loves the roar of the crowd. But you know what? When it becomes your spiritual life and you're serving God and you're so-called loving God and you're so-called loving people, but it's for the roar of the crowd. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Created me. A pure heart. Oh God, everything they do is done for man to see. They make, they make their phylacteries. That was a leather box that hung around their neck. And they tried to make them as wide as they could, see, because they kept Scripture in there. And wider the box was, they could strut around and see how much I know, see how much I love the Lord, that's all that was about. That's all that was about. Wide. It was wide and the tassels of their garments long. And they loved the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They loved to be greeted in the marketplace and to have men call them rabbi. Oh, they loved to exalt their selves. Big shots when it comes to spirituality. Everybody look at me. In reality, you know what they were doing? They were stealing. They were stealing. What do you mean, Sammy, they were stealing? They were stealing God's glory. They were stealing God's glory. It's the same if I'd go to men's warehouse and I would see a sporty fedora hat like I need another one. And there would be a fedora hat and I would take it off the rack and I'd put it under my coat and I would walk out. That is stealing. This is the same thing. Amen? Amen. They were stealing God's glory. How we doing? How we doing? Because I'm going to tell you something. You cannot fool God. You can't. You may be able to fool everybody else in your life. But God Almighty, the one that matters most, sees it all. There's a little story I want to share before we end our time today. And I think it's one of the wildest and powerful <coughs> stories in the whole Bible. Acts chapter 5, 1 through 11. Acts chapter 5, 1 through 11. But before we get there, I want to do one more thing. Sorry to be redundant. But just real, real, real quick, check your pulse again. Just real quick. Come on. Okay, now. <coughs> if there's something wrong, if God so far, through His Word, has convicted you about something, and there is something wrong, then we need to, to do something about it, right? We need to ask God to change it because it's bothering us. And surely, surely if our worship is in vain, and surely if our service is for everybody to see, we want it changed, right? 
Listen, think of the things in life that bother us. I'm going to tell you something. Living in Illinois, you know what bothers me the most about living in Illinois? The snow. It's like living in the North Pole. My first winter up here, I was ready for Santa Claus to land on the roof. And then I had people tell me, oh, this isn't a bad winter. I thought, my goodness, what is this place, Alaska? But I'm going to tell you the biggest reason, and this is just the honest truth, pure in heart, you know why I don't like the snow? You ready for this? This powerful answer? It messes up my direct TV. <laughs> that's true. If you're close to me, you know that's true. It absolutely drives me crazy when the snow messes up my dish. Listen, I miss my favorite TV shows. I miss sporting events. And it absolutely, I mean, it gets under my skin. I about get the shades. <laughs> Now think of some of the things, be honest, think of some of the things that we let bother us, that give us the shakes, that break us down, but yet God can move in our heart, and God can speak to us and tell us that there are areas that we need to get right, and it doesn't bother us, but snow messing up my direct TV does. <laughs> Woo! There's something wrong. There's something wrong. <clears throat> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're going to, in Acts chapter 5, we're going to meet a couple. Ananias and Sapphira. And I like to call them Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. And you know what? It is wonderful for husbands and wives to do things together. It's wonderful for them to go out to dinner. It's wonderful for them to take walks. But I'll tell you what, it's not wonderful for them to try to connive God. Amen? Amen. And that's what they did. That's what they did. Let's look at the story real quick. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge. Sorry, ladies. She was in on it. She was Bonnie. Yep, 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 yep. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart? Here we go. That pulse. Your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold and after it was sold? Wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. you got to understand what He did. It was His land to sell. And it was His money to keep. He just should have been truthful about it, see? But He was faking it. He wanted people to think He was more generous than he really was. Yeah, I sold the land and I'm giving you all the money. No, you didn't. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You kept some back. See? And he really thought that he could fool God. You ever thought that? Or was the time, huh? Your pulse was all out of whack and thought you could fool God? I did. I'm going to tell you something for experience, okay? If you're doing it right now and you're trying to fool God, it don't work out too good. Oh, the consequences of sin. And those consequences affect those we love too. Pure in heart. Pure in heart. Well, he does his little deal. He lies to God. You have not lied to men but to God, the Bible says in verse 4. Listen to this. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and hit his head. No. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and he hurt his back. Oh, my aching back. No. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. Woo! You know what that word died means? Died. <laughs> Dead. Deader than four o'clock. 
Can you imagine if God moved like that today? <laughs> I'm going to use the word we. We'd be dropping like flies. <laughs> but I tell you what, funeral homes would love it. Show me the money. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe one person would. Maybe one person would. And he died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. And you know what? Listen. Being impure in heart, this sermon, I'm not telling you you're going to drop over and die today. Today. But eventually, if we try to fool God, sin leads to yeah. Romans 6.23. Great fear seized all who had heard what had happened. Then the young men came forward, wrapped up his body, carried him out, and buried him. Okay, about three hours later, his wife came in not knowing. <laughs> who knows what she did with him three hours later? You know, Who knows what Savannah was out doing? I mean, she had money. Maybe she went and got her hair done. Maybe she had a facial. Maybe she bought a new outfit. We don't know what she did. I bet she did something, though. I bet she was out doing something with the money. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked, tell me, is this the prize you and I and I got for the land? Yes. <laughs> yes, she said. That's the prize. <laughs> Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the Spirit of the Lord. Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At the moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, finding her dead, carried her out, and buried her behind, beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. You know, I shared in Sunday school this morning about a little girl that I knew from Kentucky who obviously grew up. Her name was Bridget Pullman. And she married and she was Bridget Pullman Keys. And she came to the church when she was about nine from a rough home line. Got baptized when she was 11. And I'm telling you what, Bridget was for real. She lived it. Led Bible studies in the school. Was just a phenomenal leader in the youth group. And I'm telling you what, she was the humble and sweetest little thing. It wasn't sappy. It wasn't fake. It was absolutely real. Well, two weeks ago on a Thursday, her husband got up and was fixing breakfast. It was fixing breakfast for the kids and the breakfast was done and it was getting ready to pray so he went back in the bedroom to, to get Bridget to come to, to breakfast. And Bridget had died. They didn't even know she had a, a, a heart problem. At 29 years old, Bridget died. But you know what? Bridget gave her family, her grandma and her grandpa, and her aunts, and her uncles, and her husband, and her kids, and her old preacher, a wonderful gift. I'm going to tell you something. There is no doubt that Bridget Coleman Keys walks the street of gold. And we want to live our lives pure in heart in such a way that nobody has to wonder. And I'm going to ask you something. How's your pulse? How's your heart? You know what? If you were honest this morning and we were talking about a physical condition, maybe we would need to call 911 right now. And honestly, maybe spiritually, we need to call 911 right now. Because only, listen to me, listen, if you haven't heard anything in the whole sermon, listen to this. Only the pure in heart will see God. Will you stand with me? I'm going to ask the elders of the church to come up right now. So 
on just a second. Come on up here. I want the elders to come on up here. Come up here, thanks. These are the elders of Weber Street Christian Church. I am the pastor of Weber Street Christian Church. And we just want to come before you. By the grace of God, we desire to be pure in heart. We desire to be pure in heart. I just wanted you to know that. I just wanted you to know that. And we're going we're gonna to take hands. And Dale, would you say a prayer, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. stay up here with me. We're going to do something a little different this morning. During the invitation time, I want to have the elders up here. Now listen, this is going to be a tough invitation. It is. But blessed are the pure in heart. And honestly, this morning, if you've had to make a 911 call, or God has made it very clear that something is out of whack in your life, then I ask you to come. And your elders, they're, they're, they're here to, to, to pray with you. And I'm here to, to pray with you. And if there is anybody here this morning that is trying to do life without Jesus, then I hope that you come. That you come this morning and you give your, your life to Jesus and you're born again. Let's sing. Christ to die for our sins because without him we we shouldn't even have the hope of being pure of heart because to become pure of heart we have to accept Jesus and, we, and, and as we accept Jesus our heart our sins can be cleansed and our heart can be pure we just praise your name for Moses and his desire 
to ask for you to be his Lord and Savior. And I, per and I thank you so much that those out here in the congregation have asked and have, have were offered for you to walk with each one of us. So Lord, again, thank you so much for the blessings you've poured out on everyone here. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Don't you love that name? Moses. <laughs> <laughs>